the last couple of months, I've been really diving deep into what makes the 16mm film look so beautiful. I've learned a lot and I've tried a lot of different techniques to recreate it. I feel like there's a lot of focus online on the color grading, which is no doubt an important aspect of the film look, but in this video I really want to focus on something different. So I recently came back from a really nice project in Switzerland shooting sculptures in the Swiss Alps for an art exhibition. So this project is very kind of artsy, think like museum vibes. Um, so I definitely wanted to go for that 16mm film look, uh, which I always like, but especially on this kind of project, going for that film look just makes sense. Now what I think most people miss when they think about the Super 16 film look, and what I've often missed, is the actual choice of lenses. If we're going for that 16mm film look, it only makes sense that we use 16mm lenses. So these lenses are gonna help us not only because of the optics, and by that I'm talking about the flares, color and light rendition, but also the actual way that we use these lenses. So when we're talking about a Super 16 zoom lens, which is what I went for, and I'm gonna talk about the specific lens in a moment, but when we're going for these zoom lenses, then first of all, obviously, we're gonna do this whole zoom thing, which is already gonna give us a certain look. Also in terms of the depth of field and the sensor size, because these lenses only cover Super 16, obviously, we can't really use them on a big sensor. So in my case, I was using the Pocket 4K on the Super 16 mode, which gives you 2.6K in terms of quality. But in terms of the actual sensor size, we're kind of looking at a 3X cop factor. So I went with the Anjanu 17.5 to 70mm T2.5, I believe. So times 3, it becomes kind of like a 50 to 200mm equivalent if we're talking about full frame. And that also comes with a set of challenges, but it kind of boxes you in into like a certain look or, you know, a certain way of shooting, which I think is very beneficial when we want to get that 16mm film look. So I went specifically with this Anjanu lens because of the price point and also the size of it. I needed a really small um, lens because I was pretty much by my own on this project. There's a bunch of different Super 16 zoom lenses out there. Canon, I think, make the best ones, but there's other really good ones from Zeiss and other Anjanus. So yeah, there's a bunch of options. So the kind of shots I wanted to get for this project with very slow and controlled zoom shots, as well as some nice tripod movements. So I needed to find a fairly affordable way to pull these really slow controlled zoom shots. So the best way that I found was to use the Tilta M with one motor on the zoom ring. And with the Tilta M, you have this little knob that you can pull zooms with, and you can control the sensitivity so you can make it very, very, very slow so that's the solution that I've found. And let's just do a little recap on the entire rig that I've got here. So we got the Pocket 4K with the Micro Four Thirds 2PL adapter, and then the Anjanu 17.5 to 70. Then we got the Tilta M with one motor on the zoom ring. Then we got the handle then all of this is running on VLOC through this DTAP um, splitter connection. This video is sponsored by Motion Array. So for the last two plus years, Motion Array has been my go-to platform whenever I needed a template or a preset for client work or for these YouTube videos. Things like titles and motion graphics are what I tend to use Motion Array the most for, as that is what I hate doing, honestly, and it's what takes up most of my time. So with Motion Array, I can quickly choose something I like, easily customize it, and save myself a bunch of time. Apart from motion graphics and titles, they also have sound effects, music, stock footage, and a bunch of other useful assets, and you can easily search and filter through everything to find exactly what you need fast. So once you get a Motionary subscription, you get access to all of these assets, and you can use them 
pretty much wherever you want. You can sign up for Motion Array for free using the link in the description, and that will give you access to hundreds of free templates, or you could get a 50 bucks discount when you sign up for an annual subscription. So this was the main setup with which I filmed these sculptures. Um, and in some cases we kind of went out to, you know, do some hikes and get some landscape shots. And for these ones, I really needed to go light. With all the power and like all these cables, I couldn't risk um, going with this setup when it was raining or snowing. And also it was just too bulky and like too many moving parts for me to do this by myself. So for these instances, I actually used the GH5, not even a monitor, not a cage, just the GH5 body. Uh, with the Engine U lens in the adapter because it's also Micro Four Thirds, the GH5. So I could basically do the same thing, but just without the zoom motor and like without an external monitor, just the camera stripped down with the lens. So that's what I used for more like hiking outdoors, out in the wild kind of stuff. So a couple of things about this Engine U lens, if you're gonna try and use this exact one, the 17.5 to 70, um, it's actually not exactly parfocal, it's like almost parfocal, like I could get away with it uh, because I was shooting on very high um, f-stops, like really close down uh, the aperture, but it's not really parfocal. I could live with it for this project. I wanted things kind of soft anyways, and it was my best option to be honest because of the budget and the size and everything, but I wouldn't really recommend this exact one. Um, unless you somehow manage to shim it and get it parfocal. Um, but just know that it's probably not going to be parfocal if you try to use it. And if you don't know what parfocal means, by the way, um, it just means that the focus pretty much stays the same when you zoom in and out, uh, which is what you want with these zoom lenses. So this one specifically is like almost there, but like not exactly. And then also the thread size is unconventional so it's some like i don't know like 44 like 43 something um not a conventional uh, thread size so i couldn't use circular indies and i didn't want to bring a mud box so i actually didn't bring any indies i knew i was gonna shoot like very stopped down so it was kind of okay for this project um, but just know that that's another thing with this lens And I actually used this exact same setup on a short film that I shot a couple of months ago. But instead of the Engine U, we used a Canon 11 to 138, I think. One of those Canon zoom lenses, they have a bunch of these. They're really great, um, great optically. I really like the look of them. And they are perfocal, or should be perfocal. They're more expensive than this Engine U, uh, but they're better options for sure uh, if you're gonna go this route. So that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to follow me on Instagram, if you want to send me a message, talk to me, see what I'm doing, see behind the scenes, um, just that kind of Instagram stuff, then follow me at Duval 896 um, But that is all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to see all of you in the next one.